All right, thank you for that nice introduction. Thanks for coming tonight. It's always a pleasure to talk to people about <clears throat> the, the place I love is the St. John's River, growing up there and uh, fishing there with my grandfather. It's, it's just, uh, I love taking people out there and, and showing pictures. <clears throat> Even people tonight who told me that uh, they um, you know, follow me on Facebook and, and just love seeing the pictures. And I have some people that uh, all over the country that follow me. I have about 4,000 uh, followers and they, they tell me you know, they, they never ever get to this place. So it's really a privilege to, to show people this. So, <clears throat> kind of show you a little uh, background shot. This is where I am uh, most weekends. Uh, as I talk to a couple people, you may know where this is. If you not, uh, if you don't know, I'm probably not going to tell you because it's a little secret place. <laughs> no, it's 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 along the Econolacatchee River, and uh, near the St. John's River. And this is obviously a drone shot. I also have a few drone photographs in here too. You know, the drone is an amazing thing. It's got a lot of bad rap, but if you just, you know, do what you're supposed to do and fly where you're supposed to do, it, it's just an amazing thing. I call it a three-dimensional tripod, you know, and you're taking a picture of a sunrise or a sunset and you get your tripod planted, and then you say, I need to be, you know, 100 feet over there, and then you have to run over there with a, a drone. You just, two seconds, you fly over there. You can be anywhere, anywhere you want. But that's my little Ginu. And uh, a couple of my, my best friends, uh, Steve Vaughn and, and uh, Wayne Bennett, uh, kind of a trio there, and, and uh, we, we go out, and, and uh, that's the, the infamous uh, Palm Island right there. It's just a, just a really special place, and, and uh, I used to you know, go there and fish when I was a kid, and my grandfather and my dad and so forth. But a little bit about me, I'm a native Floridian. I live in Sanford, Florida, where I was born. I grew up on the St. John's River. Uh, both my grandfathers uh, were avid hunter and fishermen and hikers, and, and they kind of introduced me to all of this. And um, I consider myself a nature photographer, but I, I, I must admit I do have a day job, so I'm not making my living as a photographer. I have a day job of the uh, past 48 years. I've worked in large format printing, which kind of goes hand in hand with, um, you know, with photography, obviously. And, um, you know, we print great big things. We have inkjet printers that are, well, 16 feet wide. So we make some pretty big prints. Um, I'm the past president of the Orlando Camera Club and the Sanford Camera Club. Uh, I have a, a photo exhibit called Hidden Florida. And it hung for six months at the Orlando City Hall. Also hung another six months at the Orange County Commissioner's Chamber. And then it went to Sanford City Hall. And it was all photographs, uh, many of them of these, Central Florida. I'm a photo educator and speaker. And I'm a riverboat captain. I have a U.S. Um, a Coast Guard uh, license. And I went to, to captain school to get my, uh, um, my, my captain's license. And most everyone in the class, they wanted to be bass fishermen, um, you know, fishing guides. They, they wanted to take people out and go fishing. And <clears throat> And I said, well, man, this is the best of all worlds because number one, I don't have to buy bait. Number two, I don't have to clean fish. And number three, I never get skunked because we always there's something to take a picture of. So it's really a pretty, pretty nice little gig. I just do it on the weekends and I really only do it currently. I'm only doing it uh, every couple of months. I'll do it on a weekend. And uh, I take, I have a pontoon boat that I've customized to, for photographers. And I take uh, photographers out on my pontoon boat. They're usually about four hour trips. The sunrise trip, we always start, we meet at the dock one hour before sunrise because we, we want to get the sunrise and then get uh, you know whatever's out. The birds right now are just fabulous, as I'm sure you know. And um, so that's just a little bit about me. <clears throat> so I, I put together <clears throat> this slideshow and I wanted to um, just kind of give you some tips. So I'm gonna go through and give you some tips on my photography. And the first one is just look for the good light and shoot what's in it. Look for the good light and shoot what's in it. If you see, you know, everybody, you know, somebody I say, you'll be going through, you're driving through Cage Cove or something, and, you know, one of my former wives would say, okay, take another bear, take a picture of that bear. I said, well, I don't want to take a picture of the bear. It's, it's a bad light, and it's just a black blob, and I mean, why do I want to take it? I can buy a picture of a bear that's better than this picture. <laughs> but if you look for the good light, now, if there was a bear in really beautiful light, well, I make the extra effort to <clears throat> take that picture. 
So let me show you a few examples of, of good light. So this is out at uh, Merritt Island. Um, there were probably a thousand white pelicans on this day. It was a foggy day, which really kind of gives you the infinity feel with the, the fog behind it. And uh, you cannot see the land. And it was just, uh, it, it just turned out I was really pleased with that photograph. <clears throat> Another picture along the St. John's or along the Econ, actually. Sun's at your back. And, you know, for generally for landscape, the kind of the rule of thumb is, you know, have the sun behind you so the sun's lighting up what you see. And usually the good light is really early in the morning as well. So this was, you know, early in the morning, the sun's at my back. And these palm hammocks are just really special. A little further down the river, um, you know, just shortly after sunrise. Get these colors. This is another part of the St. John's River. And you know, the Spanish moss, the, the green of the spring, just um, the cypress trees. I just love cypress trees. Who doesn't love cypress trees living in Florida? You know, we just live in a paradise. And I tell my friends and even the guys who go out every weekend that we say, I live in Sanford, and we just go down Highway 46 to the St. John's River. It's like this whole paradise is right here in our backyards, and so many people don't even know that it exists. I take a lot of people out on my boat, and uh, they say, "Wow, I didn't even know this was here." And you know, there's hiking trails, there's boating, there's just all sorts of opportunities to see this, this uh, you know, beautiful God's creation. So talk a little bit about <clears throat> my camera and such. I shoot a Canon R5, and um, uh, oh, no, this is tip number two, okay. Uh, know your camera, learn everything you can about your camera. Um, be able to operate it in the dark. If you really wanna do, you know, I, I go out with a lot of people and, and I take people out <clears throat> and they'll look and, you know, they're fumbling with their camera and trying to learn the camera in the field is not the best thing uh -huh. to do. You wanna, Pretty much know it, especially if you're going out. If you, if you follow me, you know I do a lot of rocket launches and things like that. And some of those are at 2 o'clock in the morning, standing knee deep in a swamp somewhere trying to get a rocket going behind palm trees. And that's the last time you want to be trying to figure things out. And where is that button? What was that setting? So, you, you know, you just want to know your camera inside out. Uh, try new things. Um, gosh, YouTube is just a wealth of information. Take a class or a professional photo tour, and um, it, there's just uh, you just know your camera because if you want to picture, you know this is a picture I just took a couple of weeks ago. This was actually uh, that was the uh, rocket that was the SpaceX, December 28th. I know that because that's my birthday. And uh, there's a full moon, and there's a pier, and if you zoom in, as you can see on the pier, there's hundred people standing on that pier and it's really kind of cool because they all have cell phones and what do you do with a cell phone when there's a rocket launch? Well you take a picture of it and things lit up so you can see all these little cell phone things. I thought this thought it was pretty cool. My next tip is <clears throat> know where to stand and um, as, as you just stated I, I had the opportunity to meet Ansel Adams. It was, I went to one of his lectures he was in Orlando uh, back in the late 70s. And, um, and one thing that Hansel says is making a good photo is knowing where to stand. And that's so true. And so you got to know, you know, where to stand to take that picture. Well, I took it one step further. <clears throat> and I have an app. It's called the Photographer's Empress. Anybody use the Photographer's Empress? A few of you do. And basically, it'll tell you anywhere on, on the earth where the sun is going to come up, so the yellow line coming down to the bottom right is the sunrise. And the orange line is sunset. And the light blue line is the moonrise. And the dark is moonset. And this is, if you look at the corner up here, this is for today, January 18th, 2024. So you can go in the future and find out where the sun's going to set, where the moon's going to come up. And along the bottom here, it has all the bunch of other information. 
it says today the um, if I read it the uh, tells you what time the moon rise the sunrise the moon set all of those sorts of things so if I'm going to go photograph you know this weekend I can just go on my my laptop or my iPad or my phone and just find out exactly where we want to photograph and so this is about a five mile stretch of where I photograph and if you're trying to figure out where are we going to shoot sunrise at well obviously the sun changes where it comes up every day so with this I can just take and pinpoint exactly where I want to be and if I zoom in I can zoom in to literally it uses Google Earth or Google Maps to exactly where I want to be <clears throat> and if you look the sunrise is the, the bright yellow and it was going to be I forgot what time it was but if you see those dots those are palm trees that's one of my favorite <clears throat> spots it's called nine we call it nine palms because there's nine palm trees and I knew the day before exactly where I wanted to shoot because of this app and here's the shot uh-huh now you say <clears throat> well the moon I mean the sun comes up and you're going to know where the sun's coming because it gets light but I wanted I didn't want to have to move 100 feet or 200 feet I wanted to be there pre-sunrise to get the the god rays right. going up into the sky but the other thing is moonrise now if you ever tried to photograph moonrise it doesn't give you a warning it just boom it comes up all of a sudden you're saying did I have that right it's well, the moon's supposed to be up it's a full moon I want to shoot a full moon and all of a sudden boom it's right there it's too late so with this you can tell exactly where the moon's coming up and the moon set and so forth <clears throat> This is an ancient Indian mound, the, uh, the Timucuan, the Timucuan Indians uh, supposedly a couple thousand years ago lived in this area. This is one of their Indian mounds. And I wanted to know where the sun was going to come up because we run that river about, you know, three, four, five miles. So we wanted to be only get one opportunity for sunrise, obviously. If you miss it, you're going to wait till the next day. So we wanted to we knew where we were going to get so we got set up and we it was a nice foggy morning early morning the, the sky was beautiful and we get this kind of photograph hmm. that's that palm island again with some sunfire and we wanted the sun illuminating and it's before sunrise but you can see it's really starting to illuminate nicely this next shot is a moonrise and uh, oh. So, and the moon moves as well, so it's not going to come up in the same spot every day. And it's only going to be a full moon, you know, once a month, but you shoot it for two or three days and it still looks pretty full. But the moon, unlike the sun, it changes about an hour or so <clears throat> every day. So, the moon rise, to me, the perfect time is on the, is on the, the full moon is um, usually the full moon rises about the same time the sun sets. So you have the sun setting on one horizon and the moon rising. And the good thing about that is the sun is illuminating uh, the foreground. So you get this not just a total black, you know, you've got detail and so forth. And this is this was shot. This is one of my favorite places to photograph. It's it's on the uh, the, the Osteen Bridge between Sanford and Osteen. And um, there's this you, you'll see this, I, I, I'll point it out, there's several pictures with this same little palm hammock sticking out there. So here's one of the shots. This was, <clears throat> I think this was about 10 o'clock at night, about knee deep in water. As you, I've got a little ginu, and I, and I've got a pontoon boat, a ginu, and a couple of kayaks. And to put the tripod up, you have to put it outside the boat, and we, we got out, and you know, one of us was scanning the flashlight for alligator eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if you follow me on Facebook, a couple of people said they follow me on Facebook. It, I don't know about this Facebook thing. My mother has a fit because I, I stream a lot of this stuff, and she says, "Why can't you just stay in the boat?" <laughs> I, said, I don't know, I can't. But um, but we knew beforehand this is what we want. This didn't happen by accident. So we go and. <clears throat> We see these, you know, these poems. We photograph these during the day, and so now there's not an app that shows you where the rocket's going to go up. So I use 
uh, Google Maps. And with Google Maps, you can measure the distance. And if you use the measured distance, you can measure between point A and point B. And it draws a straight line. So I put one point on launch pad 39A or 39B or whatever 40, whatever launch pad is going at. And then I drag it across where I'm going to stand or about where I'm going to stand. And I can see a direct line the way a crow would fly from where I'm standing to where the rocket's going to go and what foreground, in this case, the palm trees. And um, so we knew pretty much about exactly where it's going to go. We always have a debate. Usually I go up two or three guys. And we, every time we have this debate about rocket launches. I'm getting on from nature, just this kind of nature. It's nature and technology. Just on. <laughs> we always have a debate. No, it's going to go up there. No, it's going to go up there. I just, I know where it's going to go. You guys can argue all night long. And usually I'm pretty close. And then the other thing is, what, what exposure are you going to shoot? I said, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. What are you going to shoot? I don't know. What are you going to shoot? I said, I'm going to shoot up 11 at, uh, you know, ISO 400. And they'll, you know, everybody, and then the last minute I'll change it up. I say, no, I think I need to go to 200 or something. So, but usually these shots are about anywhere from three minutes to six minutes long. It's one shot. And, and you only obviously have one chance at it. At least a sunrise or something, you can get a couple of photographs. But this one, you have one shot. And that was, I, I would guess, it's probably about a four minute exposure. And, um, and if you blow it, you blow it, you got to come back. So we pretty much got it down back. Somebody asked me uh, exposures, yeah. and <clears throat> it's, it's easier than you think. You just put your camera on a tripod, you put it on a bulb, and I usually shoot between ISO 100 and 400 is the speed of the film or the, the digital sensor. And I shoot from F11 to F16, depending on how close I am to the launch pad. This is about 20. 20 miles, 23 or 24 miles away from the launch pad. So it's a good distance. If you're up in Titusville shooting over the river, then it's much brighter. And I would stop it down so that, and, and probably slow down everything too so I don't blow everything totally out. But we do a lot of that. Again, knowing your camera. And here's another one. That, there's the famous uh, Palm Island right there that uh, on the Econ Waikachi. And this time we knew that the moon was coming up. So I used my handy little app, the photographers at first, to know exactly where the moon was going to be rising and about where it was going to be, you know, above the horizon. And knew I needed a wide angle lens. And um, so it's, it's an educated guess, but we got lucky on this one and it worked out pretty good. Another tip I have is anticipate the shot. <clears throat> Be alert. Anticipate what's going to happen. Have your camera settings ready. Because a lot of times I'll be out the night before photographing a rocket. And then we get out to shoot sunrise or something. And all of a sudden my camera's all whacked out with, you know, five minute exposures and everything else. Okay. So you got to get everything ready. Have the right lens on. <clears throat> and what happens <clears throat> in one place is um, we go out for sunrise. and Usually, just right after sunrise, there's a, there's a whole flock of sandhill cranes, there's probably a hundred of them. And they get up in flocks of, in groups of you know, five to 10, and they start flying right afterwards. Now here we are with tripods and wide angle lenses looking the other way. And as soon as I know, I start putting on my longer lens, start turning around and changing the setting so I can get this shot right here. And everybody else has wide angle lenses on it. They're scrambling to get their, you know, their lens. And, you know, if you know that's coming, you just get ready for it. Yeah, you know these birds. These are, man, these are, um, they're hard to get. Those kingfishers, they're quick. And, but they're, they're territorial, which is a cool thing. Because we see them in the same, flying back and forth the river. And uh, again, knowing your camera, <clears throat> because the camera has so much technology packed into it that you can get a uh, auto focus. I don't know how photographers before could photograph and get a tack sharp in focus 
picture of something that flies as fast. Because now these cameras, I was just talking to somebody with an R6, I think, and a uh, Camden R6, I shoot an R5, very similar. And <clears throat> they have sensors on them. And you can just take and look through, and if something a bird flies through, it's gonna, it's like a, a heat-seeking missile <laughs> that locks on that bird, and it, 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 it's in focus. <clears throat> Matter of fact, here's another tip <clears throat> I didn't put in here, but so for your R5, <clears throat> or anybody with a camera that has these, you know, these um, autofocus, the best way to learn it is to take and put it on autofocus. You have the whole screen, and you just look through it. <clears throat> and what you do is you sit down in your lazy boy chair in your living room, and you go to YouTube, and you put on a duck hunting show. <laughs> And you sit there, and these ducks are flying on your TV. And it focuses on them. So you're not out in the cold and everything else trying to learn it. You're just sitting here with, you know, just zoom in on your TV. And you, just, you do that for about 30 minutes, and you got it. Do they have any good sun ups? <laughs> I hate to get up that early. <laughs> I guess you could do that. <clears throat> Yeah, for, for some of us, we go on the boat, the time we leave the, uh, the ramp is one hour before sunrise. Because it's just about a 10 minute ride to where I want to go. And we know ahead of time exactly, because of this app, where the sun's going to go. Oh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, but we get up an hour beforehand because we want to get the pre, uh, the the pre-sunrise and the colors, and you'll see some more pictures of that in just a minute. So composition. You've got the rule of thirds, you got leading line, you got S-curves, you got some symmetry and pattern, you got diagonal, you got triangle, you got all the crazy stuff, and you can Google all this stuff and see. So I'm gonna point some stuff out as we go along with some of my photographs about some of the composition that I've used. This first one is Rosiette's Spoonbill, and it's about in the in the right third. So the rule of thirds, how many of you are familiar with the rule of thirds? Most of you? Okay, good. Those of you not, if you look at tic-tac-toe, <clears throat> they just draw a tic-tac-toe on the, on the photograph, where the lines converge are the thirds, and that's where the subject traditionally can go. It can be a whole vertical or horizontal third, but usually you don't put something bullseye center. Sometimes you do, but typically you use the rule of thirds. So here's another rule of thirds, and the bird's on the, the right third. And then there's also another thing that's kind of going subliminally is the, the thirds of layers. You have a, the water layer is about a third. The grass is about a third. And then the green shrubbery is about a third. So you've got both of those things kind of going with the bird going. And I also like to make sure when I photograph birds and wildlife that a lot of people just like to zoom in. A lot of my friends, they've got lenses this long, they cost $12,000. You know, they're taking a picture of their eyeball just about, but they're just so cropped at it. I say, well, it's good if you, you know, for a textbook or something, but I want to have a little bit of the, the, the essence of the space and the, yeah. where it is. So I like to see where they're going, the reflection and things like that. Another um, good thing about composition, or a good thing to remember, is to the perspective that you're at. And um, you want to be down on their eye level. You know, this next one of these turtles is if I were, I was in my pontoon boat on the St. John's River up there, the land on, the, on this trip. And if you're standing up, you know, a foot above the water, stand up, shooting down, it's kind of like shooting children, it's the same thing. If you, I love photographing little kids, my nieces and nephews and my grandchildren running around with the long lens. And the best thing to do is just to sit down on the ground so you're eye level to them, and then just let them be running around you and you, you know, you get a few good shots. So it's the same thing with wildlife and such too. <clears throat> And then you've been out to recently to uh, Merritt Island and seen the flamingos. Yeah. yeah. I just found them a couple of weeks ago, and they're just absolutely uh, beautiful. So we went out in the boat and we obeyed all the rules and 500 feet from that little island and just anchored out there. And we sat there for a couple of hours, and there's four of them out there. 
and they just thought this beautiful. I, it was a real treat. I'm, I'm not, quite honestly, I'm not a big bird photographer. I mean, I'll photograph one if they fly by me, but um, I'm more into landscapes and things like that. But you know, just by default, you get some pretty bird pictures, and this flamingo was just really special to go out there and see that. Um, it's kind of a dramatic picture. Ooh. That is um, out near Lawton Lake on the St. John's River. Obviously, a drone shot. Uh, a minute ago, I said, you know, shoot with the sun at your back, get the good light. Well, this is shooting right into the sun, but you can see the shadows and, and what it does, and it's just a, on a foggy morning like that. The next tip I have is watch for reflections, and they're everywhere. And but you have to see them. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. Sometimes you can't see the reflections because there's so much other stuff going on. But once you just really focus on it, you can get you know stuff like this. Yeah, I, I, you know sometimes you just click the shutter and you know it's going to be a, a wing photograph. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine, Bill Bachman. He passed away several years ago, but a, a really great photographer. He said, I love it when I click the shutter and the camera says, yes. <laughs> now that was one of those yes shots. But the other thing I'll do you a trick, a little tip. <clears throat> You've all seen the rosettes and they're, you know, wading birds, of course, and their their beaks are going back and forth and getting the shrimp or whatever they eat, back and forth and back and forth. And they're boring when they have their, but if you notice, they're, they all have their heads up. Well, I keep a hawk call in my boat. <laughs> I have a hawk call and a turkey call and a couple of other things. It doesn't matter what it is, but you only get a couple of shots at it. And when I let out that call, every one of them stopped and put their head up. Like, and I told everyone, I said, get ready, because you go one shot. Boom, there it is. And then they went right back. They never flew away. They just sat right here and did that whole thing. So. We call these the lollipop trees. The spacing on them, though, is just amazing. The reflection, the reflection of the sky. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you got to use a third. You know, you got to put the horizon in the bottom third or the top third. Well, not this one. This one needs to be just dead center, you know. So there's, there's reasons to break the rules when you know the rules. And uh, this is one of my favorite pictures. I've, I've sold a lot of those as well. Leading lines, that's another composition you can see you know, at an angle. My photo here, I use a camera, um, a mirrorless full frame camera. I just I have three lenses that I typically use, a 24 to uh, 105, which is my kind of standard walking around lens. Um, I use a media or a ultra, super ultra wide lens, which is an 11 millimeter to a, to a 24, which is super duper wide. And then I have for birds and wildlife a 100 to 400. Uh, I use a tripod whenever I can. I use a drone. And believe it or not, one of the, the best cameras, but somebody says, you know, the best camera you have is the one you have with you. Well, your cell phone is always in your pocket. And it's amazing. I mean, so, you know, I go down to, I was just down in, in uh, Colombia, South America last week and my long story short my fiance lives here and we're working on the visa to get her back a 90 day fiance visa thing she's she's not 20 years old she's you know in her mid 50s <laughs> she is beautiful though and uh, anyway we're trying to get her here it, it's, a, it's about a two two or three year process to do that so hopefully in 2024 we'll get her here but anyway what i was going to say was i go down there and the first time i take my camera <clears throat> A lens or two, and a truck, and you walk around in Cartagena. It is, it is hot. It's like you know, it's really hot, and you're lugging all the stuff. And some places are kind of questionable. So then I went back, and I just took <clears throat> my cell phone, and that's the only thing I took pictures with. And it's amazing the pictures you can get with these cell phones that are available today. So don't discount your camera phone. 
Um, let's talk about a little bit about cropping. <clears throat> now you can crop post, you know, after you take the picture, but if you know what you're cropping for, you can compose it in the camera a little bit better, but then you can only crop it. So we have, of course, a horizontal, kind of the standard, and then we have um, you know, a couple of horizontals here, and then we have a vertical. And um, I'll quote my friend Bill Bachman again, he always, he said, uh, the best time to take a vertical picture is immediately after you take a horizontal picture. The reason being is he did a lot of uh, magazine covers and things like that. And if you take in a picture horizontally, you get a picture, then immediately take one vertical. You don't know if it's gonna be a, a two page spread or a cover. And if you have a, uh, you know, a cover where you wanna be with the recognition of the cover and you don't have the resolution or anything, you have to crop it down. So always shoot, so I try to shoot both. And, um, but verticals are a little bit more, you know, such so as natural. You have to turn it 90 degrees, obviously. But sometimes these, these are just, they just, you know, this was, just had a mood about it. This <coughs> one lone palm tree going out over the lake and with the summer. This is on Lake Harney, by the way. How many of you been up to Lake Harney? Gosh, those palm trees out there, that white sand. Lake Harney, it, it looks like the beach almost. The, the palm trees, it's just a beautiful place. The eastern shore of Lake Harney. Y'all see those yellow flowers that bloom every year on the St. John's River? Um, they bloom for three weeks. And um, you know, this is a, um, oh, we're on cropping. So this is a panoramic, a panoramic or pano. Uh, I shoot a lot of panos. This is kind of a medium pano. Here's a little bit wider pano. And then here's a super wide pano. Forget a square crop. They can be fun too. The other tip is I have my camera with me almost all the time. And this was on my way to work. I live in Sanford, I work in downtown Orlando. And a lot of times I'll go around the lakefront of Lake Monroe. And it's obviously shortly after sunrise. This guy out this fishing boat. And it's like <laughs> I don't care how they done right. I gotta stop and get this picture. <laughs> so I stopped and got a picture and it's just a it's a real fun picture to get. Try to separate <clears throat> the subject. You can do that in several ways. By natural layers of the background, the subject, and the foreground by using depth of field. This next picture is a, um, just using natural elements so that the bird didn't get lost in the background. You've got all those yellow flowers mm -hmm. and it's just, and it's standing on top of a fence post. I mean, everything just worked. Mm -hmm. Another example is actually the background obviously being the clouds, the foreground being the water. And this is that same Indian mound um, out there on the on Puzzle Lake. Here's another cloud shot. Do you ever call Florida Mountains? Florida Mountains, that's what we call Florida Mountains. You go out west and you, you know, you're driving along, you see those mountains out, but well, we got, they're just clouds and they move. And a friend of mine is a, <clears throat> a photographer, a professional photographer in uh, Arizona. Ken Skluke is his name. He says, you know, you, Montana and all those, you know, all those. He says, but you guys got one thing that we don't have is clouds. He says, it's very rare for us to get clouds. So take advantage of those clouds when you're photographing things and just get a palm tree in front of it. Or foreground. So here's some flowers in the, uh, the yellow flowers in the foreground and um, yeah just try different things um, sometimes you want to you know isolate the foreground and get those 
sable palms and the trunks behind it. Sometimes you want a super wide angle. So this is on the, you go over the Lake Jessup Bridge towards Sanford. This is that, uh, that big pasture on the north east side. It's just full of, we go up, there's a place you can go hiking back there. You take the boat around the edge. But this one I was just I pulled off the side of the highway and I had my tripod and I raised it as high as it would and I held it up over my head so I could get, you know, that um, that shot. And then sometimes you want just a, you know, isolated shot because it's just a whole different statement to it. Hmm. And this one's kind of cool with the, um, <clears throat> the flowers popping up over the horizon there. So you just get down low and you want to get those flowers up above it. I purposely put this one in here because there's a, a grave mistake I made on this picture. Actually, I, I made it so I could demonstrate something. <clears throat> when I was a young rookie photographer, I had a guy that was my mentor, and he would cr critique my stuff. <clears throat> and he would critique the minorest things, but it made me such a better photographer. And one of the things I learned is you always Always, always, there's no excuse not to have a straight horizon line. Mm. Now, a lot of times you're out photographing, you say, wow, this is great. And you just, you just, as the maker of the photograph, sometimes you just don't even see that until somebody else points it out. So look at the difference between this shot and that shot. And I see this so many times. I critique a lot of pictures. I'm doing a I'm a judge for the Orlando Camera Club from time to time, several times a year. And if you have a crooked horizon, it's it's toast. <laughs> mm. But then once you see it, you can always it's so easy to fix. You know, sometimes you're bouncing around in a boat, it's you know, it's hard to get a perfectly level, even if you're shooting on a tripod, you might have a little crooked, but you can always mm. take it into Photoshop or Lightroom and just adjust it up a little bit. There wasn't much manipulation in this picture. And I, I'm not gonna tell you I never manipulate pictures, but I do. But I, I try to do it selectively. And the thing that I did on this picture is there were, there were four sailboats in that picture. And I just wanted one. So I took the other three out. I thought it was much of a, a more Backlit Spanish moss. Early in the morning. This is up the Macachi River. Black and white. Uh, this is one of the dwarf cypress trees. They're all gnarly. There's thousands of them in this one particular lake that you about have to kayak to it. There's no public boat ramps. There's only a few homes on the lake. It's up in uh, the south of Ocala. And it's just, uh, yeah, this one just really struck me, just the gnarliness of this, of this tree. So what do I do after I take the picture? <clears throat> well, I use Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, use a few other things like One One software, Snapseed. If um, if you don't do anything else from this talk, write down Snapseed. Take a picture of anything up there with your phone too, so you remember. But Snapseed is a free phone app. Well, it might cost three bucks or something now. But <clears throat> I take so many pictures with my phone and edit them in Snapseed, and then post them up within minutes of when I took the picture. Snapseed, if you get it, <clears throat> it's a pretty simple program, but YouTube it and watch about five or 10 minutes of YouTube just gotta get the hang of it because it really is a powerful little program. I use Topaz, Sharpen, Denoise, and uh, Gigapixel too. Gigapixel allows you to take a, a picture that might be a little bit low res and, and make it larger. 
fog is wonderful to photograph in. We love when we go out and there's a foggy morning, the ground fog. And sometimes you can cut it with a knife. Again, the same little palm island. Just around the bend from there, there's another place we call Palm Alley. Because there's two strands of, of um, palm trees. And this is one of them that I just printed 30 inches by 60 inch. And it's being framed up for a client. Um, should be ready next week. Weather is fun to photograph. And these, you just don't, you can't go out and say, I'm going to take a picture of a thunderstorm. Well, you know, you know, sometimes you're in the middle of a thunderstorm, you get drenched. This one, I was driving down the road, and I saw it. And that's another thing about Florida. <clears throat> you know, drive out where you can see forever, at least on the St. John's Prairie. So I stopped on the, the bridge at the Jolly Gator and took that from the top of the bridge. <clears throat> That was a big gator, and I was about 15 feet away in a kayak. But that's what makes it so special, is you're eye to eye with that thing. <laughs> and I blew this up a kayak one, and this one, it was like four feet by six feet. Oh. And it was huge. And the scales on, you know, it, it, it was just tack sharp. If you take pictures of alligators, <clears throat> one thing I'm going to mention in another one, and it goes true with bald eagles too, is underexpose your photograph because those bumps on their back are usually so reflective that it just blows out. It just blows out the highlights. So I usually underexpose alligators by a stop or two thirds of a stop anyway. You know what those bumps do? You know, the back? They're like radiators. You know, these are from the dinosaur age. The sun in themselves all day, and it, it makes those little humps hot so that during the night, it just radiates heat for them, keeps them warm. Um, I told you we do some drone photography too. We love to photograph drones, and this is probably one of my best selling photographs. Is out on the St. John's Prairie. There, there were a, a herd of wild horses. Have you heard of the horses out there? Maybe you have. <clears throat> so we all heard about the horses at Payne's Prairie, <clears throat> but these are out on the St. John's. Are you talking Puzzle Lake? Yeah. Exactly, Puzzle Lake. But the real story is, I think I've heard, got the story, I've heard several versions of it. There's a rancher out there, you may, Bo Yarbrough, I think his name was in the newspaper just recently about selling part of his property to the uh, little big Econ Lakachi State Forest. The rancher out there. <clears throat> My understanding that Bo got these as rescue horses from Texas and turned them loose. And they ran out there for about 10 years just wild, nobody fed them. And I talked to Bo one time, and he kind of spins a little different story on it, but they've been out there since the Spaniards, but. Which <laughs> Spaniards? <laughs> but nobody fed them or touched them or anything. <clears throat> and it was really cool, because I could see them in the boat almost every time I knew where they are usually where they were, and I could find them. There was some hiking through them. You have to hike about four or five miles, but people would hike back there to see them. <laughs> a couple of years ago, a friend of mine was out kayaking, and he called me on the phone. It was a Wednesday. He's retired, and I work, and he says, well, I'm hiding on the river, and there's uh, one of these horses is, um, was limping. And then a couple of days later, he said that the horse died. And um, I guess it got some lacerations, it got cut or something, and then some leeches got into it and actually put it down. So the state forest ranger didn't want him out there anyway. So this was, so he 
they, he got Bo Yarborough to go out there with his cowboys and round the, and round the rest of them up oh. and take them. So now they're they're safe, but they're you know on the ranch somewhere where the public can't see them, unfortunately. So, <clears throat> but they were really a joy to see. We go out there and we take pictures of them. Now, this is a drone shot. Drone shot. Gee, it's only 25 feet up in the air, you know, to get that that angle. Beach scenes, leading lines. One thing I, I encourage people to do is to print their work, whether you print small or big. But everybody has pictures on their phone or on their cameras or on their cards. And they, you know, I know people that never take pictures off their phone or never take pictures off their card. So, you know, I encourage people to print your work. There's so many labs that you can do it so easily. Um, you know, if you don't have a printer at home, you can sit out and have like a, a metal print. So this is a metal print. I printed about 20 prints like this for a bank uh, lobby in uh, Lake Mary at the uh, community, Main Street Community Bank. And this, this was printed on metal. They're just absolutely beautiful. This is another shot. Any of you go to Deep Creek, you know where Deep Creek is? Yeah. Deep Creek, oh, gosh, that's just another beautiful, beautiful place. The Cypress trees out there. So this is another one of my best sellers. So uh, recently, you know, made a big canvas print for that. Canvases are not that much. You can get a canvas print for, you know, a few hundred dollars. And so that's a um, canvas print. But then I decided, well, I told you I have 16 foot wide printers. My friends don't like it, they say. Gosh, we go out and we're shooting with you. We come along and make an eight by ten print, and the next day you got an eight foot by ten foot print. <laughs> well, so, so um, <laughs> but that's printed right onto a piece of foam board. Yeah, I have a flatbed printer that you put a four by eight foot sheet of foam board in there that prints right on it. <laughs> So here's a picture. <clears throat> this is uh, Wekaiva Springs State Park by the campground over there by the the little campground and, and everything right there. The Sunrise Sand Hill. This is a uh, Florida sand hill. The wire grass and the live oaks, the fog. And I really like that picture. So I wanted it in my office. So there it is in my office. Oh, wow. So I print it right onto wallpaper. Here's another picture of wallpaper. These, this is a Lake Jessup flower bloom. They make nice little accent walls. Again, wallpaper. This is all wallpaper, floor to ceiling, wall to wall wallpaper. Downtown Orlando, I had access to the roof of one of the buildings downtown Orlando. That's City Hall in the lower left hand corner. It's another office at my printing company. This is Fort Clinch State Park. Have you ever been to Fort Clinch? It's a great place. And just last week I printed this for the, um, the St. John's Rivership Company. They have a new owner and I just printed four or five large prints to go on to the Rivership and in the ticket office they wanted wallpaper. So this is the uh, wallpaper, and there it is hanging up in the uh, wall. Wow. It's about eight feet tall and 12 feet wide, I think. And we have, this is wallpaper. <clears throat> you know how wallpaper comes in like 24 inch wide rolls? Well, I have a roll of wallpaper that's 126 inches. I mean, it's 10 feet wide. So I can print wallpaper as one piece, seamless. This is at uh, City Hall in the lunchroom there and we did a uh, that's not my photograph but, um, <laughs> but we printed the wallpaper it takes about 10 guys to hang it but yeah, it's, yeah. it sure is pretty when you get up uh, some other nature back to nature shots uh, maybe even more because their head and their tail feathers would be just blown white whereas this you can see there's detail in the uh, in the white And if you've ever photographed bald eagles from a boat, it's so much fun because you can see them. They're always perched on the river so they can see where they want to 
get down and get the fish. And we take the pontoon boat and we just pull up in front of them. Sometimes they'll sit there for 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes they'll never fly and we just leave them. Sometimes they'll sit there for five or 10 minutes and then they'll fly and we'll get a picture of them. And they just go 100 yards down there, come back up and sometimes we get a second shot out of them. <coughs> Deep Creek. Lake Chesil. This is that place near Ocala that has uh, the dwarf cypress trees. This is the same nine palms, and I have a couple of other pictures of those same palm trees. That's the Indian mound over there to the right. This is sunset. Sometimes the sun just has a show like nothing else. Mm -hmm. And this is Lincoln Road in downtown Sanford. The Dwarf Cypress. You have that one already. This is one of my favorite, these Dwarf Cypress. It looks like a, they're doing a dance, these two trees. <laughs> and see how we have the leading lines going to the middle? It just it kind of pulls. Yeah, pull you right in. That's another one of my favorite ones. Just like the keep on trucking. Remember that little keep on trucking? <laughs> Every time I see that tree, it makes me think of that. It's great. I love this picture. This is on St. John's up near, well, we kind of, kind of. But what I like about this is the wind blowing. It's just, you know, it's a windy day. We usually like really calm days. So we have nice reflections. But the wind blowing really gave this motion of the moss, the Spanish moss that they were hanging straight down. It was, it was blowing. This is a drum shot of where we go up on the Econ. You can see right over here is the, uh, that's the Palm Island. We photograph, I mean, we just about know every tree on that place, every palm tree we've been. The nine palms are right here. We shoot the sunrise right back over here, photographing this way. We, yeah, it's just, but the drone is so much fun because you can really get a different perspective, obviously, on things. Here's another drone shot of the Palm Island when the water was very low. When the water's low, these sand beaches are just absolutely beautiful. This is the Indian Mound again in the drought season. This prairie, that's Puzzle Lake in the, uh, in the background. But then another time in the, uh, in the rainy season, this is that same Indian Mound. It's like an island, or it is an island. It's only about knee deep out there. This was kind of a fun photograph, a uh, drum picture. Those are uh, great white eaterets, snowy whites, and a few blue herons. And I was up about 400 feet shooting straight down and it just made a really cool pattern, and they could care less when I was up there. I mean, I'm not swooping down on them and stuff like that, just shooting down. And actually, had the film. I wish I had that. I should have put the film on here. I took a, like a five-minute video from the drone, and you'd, it was like, oh, this great blue, he'd fly over here, and then this would fly over there, and this would. It was like they were having a big party, and they were just kind of socializing with everybody. And you could, do, you know, they were about probably 100 yards away from me. A little further than that, and I was about 400 feet up in the air. And you can never see that. I mean, if you got in there hiking or boat, they fly. But to get that perspective, it was it was pretty cool. Again, just be ready. In a kayak, you know, you don't have much room in a kayak, so you've got to be able to say, okay, well, let me get ready just in case I see, you know, a deer or some kind of wildlife. But that picture was a total mistake. <laughs> Sometimes they just happen that way. That was at Gatorland on the, on the boardwalk, and the bird flew, and I took a picture just kind of from the hip, and it just kind of turned out like that. Foggy, bald eagles, wood ducks. Now this next one I really like. I, I was trying to get this picture for probably a year. I said, it'd be really cool to get a bunch of blackbirds on telephone wire. <laughs> We're gonna get through this. 
this is what I wanted to <clears throat> show you, one of my tips here. <clears throat> so this was in the uh, Highland Park run up in the Dead River up in the land area. And I went by this great blue like three times to get this picture. <clears throat> because what I wanted is I wanted his head in this dark area. Because it wouldn't have been the same picture if he was over here, or if he was over here. Mm -hmm. You see how he's just, so that's one of the tips you got to think about when you're taking pictures. Okay. And if you're in a boat, if you're the driver of the boat, <laughs> you can get anywhere you want. So, you know, everybody's taking pictures, but I, I said, I, I circle back around, I said, no, I missed it, let me do this again. And I did about three times and I got that shot. This one, I was flying up, and, and these birds just flew right underneath me. It's like, oh my gosh, look at that. And the shadows are just a whole different perspective. Lightning is always fun, and weather. Now, my favorite all-time weather shot is this one. Does that say Florida? Or not? I mean, that is, it just couldn't be anywhere in Florida. This is on the Osteen Bridge, standing on the bridge, on the south side of the bridge, looking east. And there's that, that point of palm, single palms, and this thundercloud. And it was like, wow. That was... I had this one at about four feet by eight feet. The Carney. The light, here again, this is all about the light. This one and this next one is, um, this is on St. John's River and the light just makes it. All mm -hmm. Eagles High Key, something already had that one in there. St. John's River, it's all about the light. It's early morning light. Rosie at Spoonville. This is kind of how I roll in my, my little boat. My little <laughs> Enu. It's got a, it's a 18 foot Enu with a 70 horsepower Yamaha on it. And I can just beach that up in the grass and get out and you know take these pictures. And then um, I'm also, I told you I'm a riverboat captain. So here's my, uh, my, my, my version of my riverboat. So it's a pontoon boat with some guys and we're out here, you know, we're taking pictures. Uh, here's another one during the flower bloom on the Econ. The four photographers, everybody gets a good seat. We just take it nice and slow and get all these great pictures. This is my favorite, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's Mall Eagle up here. And everybody's photographing. Everybody, I mean, we brought out $50,000 worth of lenses. <laughs> So you, you get those kind of lenses, and you're looking at an eagle, and that's the kind of shots we get. And this time of the year, we'll see, I'll make a run from um, Mullet Lake Park to, to Deep Creek, and we'll see 15 bald eagles. Hmm. And we get people from out of town, out of state, and they just are, you know, it's freezing where they're coming from, and it's like, we're out there flip-flops, taking pictures of bald eagles. But that's kind of my show, so I appreciate your, um, Thank you.